Thank you. Thank you. God bless all of you. Please sit down. Please sit down. I told Marilyn earlier that we as senators simply couldn't do what we are able to do if we didn't have Marilyn there with Susan B. Anthony, Marilyn and the, and the team there. And I am so thankful for their, their wonderful work. And um, before I, you know, I don't want to forget, I, I do have to thank the folks here at the Family Leader, the, the leadership of Bob Vanderplotz. Thank you so very much, Bob, for all that you do. And for Chuck and for Danny and everyone involved with the Family Leader. Yes, please. Thank them. So I, I do have a number of things that I would like to touch on, things that were really important as we work through the United States Senate. But I am going to focus a little bit more on what Marilyn was, was visiting about, and uh, that is life and how truly important that is to me and many others of us that are serving in the United States Senate. So again, Marilyn, uh, I wanna thank you for your wonderful work on our pro-life policies, helping us through those pitfalls in Washington, D.C. Um, I wanna thank Representative Steve Holt as well. Um, I, I told Danny as I was walking back out, uh, Danny had me tearing up too. And Steve is a tremendous leader in our state legislature, and I was so blessed to be able to know and work with Steve and uh, just know that he is a strong defender of life. And uh, of course, Sandy Salmon. Sandy, are you here today? Thank you, Sandy, so much. Um, we just have some wonderful, wonderful folks working for all of us at the state capitol to promote and secure life. Um, so I'm going to focus a little bit on uh, some of the issues that, that Marilyn brought up. And one, and first and foremost, what I would like to address is the fact that she mentioned that millennials, we often think of millennials as those that don't support life. They're maybe more pro-abortion. And I as well believe that our millennials are trending towards life. Uh, my daughter would fall into that category, and we've had many discussions about life in our household. And a number of years ago, she was working on a project for her high school. In her speech class, she was asked to come up with a topic that would be controversial something that she believed in, but she could speak about in front of a group, and then they would have a debate after her presentation. So of course I was traveling, and as we often did, uh, we would get on the phone in the evening and she would walk me through the day's activities, and then she said, Mom, I'm working on this speech project, and it's really important to me. And she's like, do you mind if I go over it? I'm like, of course, Libby, of course. And so. She went through this very eloquent speech about life and how important it was to her, not just as a young woman, but also as someone that can reason through fact and science and knowing that that child in the womb is a baby. So she took the time, she went through her speech, and I was crying on the other end of the phone. I was crying, um, one, because her speech was so beautifully thought through, but just as a very proud mother of a young woman in a time when we do think of millennials as not being pro-life. So she went through that speech, and, and she gave it the next day in front of her classroom. And so I, I had this trepidation in my heart wanting to talk to her at the end of the day because I, I just felt that her classmates would be throwing barbs at her because she was pro-life. And so at the end of the day, I was able to call her and visit with her and I asked her, how did your speech go? You know, are you okay? What, you know, what was the conversation? And she said, mom, it went great. And at the end of the speech, there was no debate. There was no debate, folks. People believe. So if we can have more Libby's, more Marilyn's, more Steve's, more Sandy's out there um, fighting for life and sharing that experience, the more good will come 
the more good will come. So I, I thank you very much. And I am focusing a lot on the life issue today because it is so important to me. And as Marilyn was talking through the infanticide issue, I just, again, I, my heart just hurts when we talk about these issues. And when I think about those children that are going through those botched abortions, one, we want to prevent abortion. But if a baby is born and lives through an abortion, don't we absolutely have the duty to make sure that we are protecting that living, born, alive child? So tonight, I know that uh, a number of my colleagues have been here today. And this evening, you will have the great honor of hearing from my friend and colleague, Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska. And I am so pleased to be a partner with him on many different initiatives, but one was the Born Alive Bill. And we brought this up to the Senate. Leader McConnell felt it was very important to bring this bill up. And we spearheaded it, and we had a lively debate, lively debate, as you can imagine, on the floor of the Senate about protecting these babies that are born alive. I brought up in, in my speech, as Marilyn mentioned, little Micah Pickering, and what a beautiful baby he was, perfectly formed and born at a very, very young gestational age. And the bill, all that this bill required was that a baby who was born alive from a botched abortion should be treated by that physician as that physician would treat with life-saving efforts any other child born at that same gestational age. Don't we agree that's the right thing to do? So. So I, I agreed, Ben and I agreed, so many of us agreed, but it was blocked by the Senate Democrats. And all they wanted to argue is this is an affront to a woman's right to choose. And you know what? When I went to my desk to debate the virtues of this bill, I pointed out to the Democratic colleagues across the aisle that this bill had nothing to do with abortion. Nothing to do with abortion. But it was about saving the life of a child that was born, born alive in a physician's office. It had nothing to do with a woman's right to choose. But what they will do is start to mix up those issues. It sounds very scary, folks. If they can take away that woman's right to choose, oh, for heaven's sakes. But that's not what it was about. And we thought for certain, being human beings and believing in humanity, that they would support the bill. And we were wrong. I'm appalled, folks. I am appalled. But the fight is not over. So tonight, when Ben Sass is in front of this audience, I want you to give him a huge thank you from everyone here at the Family Leader and for those of us that do believe in the sanctity of life. So thank you for that. Please welcome him, open arms. Um, it's phenomenal to have such wonderful, wonderful um, leaders like Ben Sass, James Langford, Tom Cotton and others serving with us in, uh, Tim Scott as well, serving with us in the United States Senate. So uh, Senator Langford and I have worked on defunding Planned Parenthood. I'm very proud of that. I, you know, I don't shy away. Uh, there are a lot of issues that are very, very tough. And some, some senators will have a hard time speaking on the life issue. I don't have a problem with this, folks. When you believe in something and you believe in life, let's talk about it. Okay, let's talk about it. So I had a number of other things I was going to speak about today, but uh, folks, you know, just I'm, I'm so moved by the life issue, and that is one that is so very important to me. And we need you as well out there on the, on the front lines working for life. 
So uh, we have seen a lot of appalling measures, and Marilyn mentioned a number of them previously. I'm just going to briefly touch on one that moved me earlier this year as we're talking about the life issue. And we talk about birthday abortions. Uh, they exist out there, you know, being able to abort at the very last minute before a child is born, how appalling that is. Um, selection as well, gender selection. Uh, there are parents that, that believe if their child is not as perfect perfect as another child, that they should be allowed to abort, so on and so forth. And in front of the house, there was a very special witness that was called forward to speak on right to life. And this young man was a young man that was born with Down syndrome. And he came in front as that panel of witnesses, and he spoke to the members of the house that were on that panel in that committee meeting. And he presented quite beautifully why he has every right to live. And I believe that as well, folks. We are all different. There is no one perfect human being. God made us that way. So when we look around and we see the differences that exist across society, know that we're all equal in God's eyes, regardless of what other people might find as faults. Psalm 139 God knew me when I was in my mother's womb. God knew me, and he thought I was perfect. He knew all of you, and he knew that you were perfect for him. So I am so thankful that there is diversity amongst our ranks. I am so glad that God has given us the grace to look at each other through his eyes and see perfection where maybe in humanity there is not perfection. But we all have the right to live. I believe in innocent life. And I think if we are out there promoting it, um, we will continually win. So I'm going to stop there. I have a lot more that I could share with you today, folks. But I just wanted to take the time and, and share some thoughts on the life issue because it is so important. We have so many wonderful judges that we are confirming through the Judiciary Committee and moving on to the floor of the Senate. I'm so proud to be serving on the Judiciary Committee this year, my first year on Judiciary. And it is giving us a great platform to move forward, some wonderful conservative judges. So again, I want to thank you for allowing me the time to come forward. Um, the card on your table, folks, please visit. Please hashtag it. Please do that. Um, please remind others of the beauty in, in all of our lives and that, that God has chosen us. Um, I appreciate it so much. Again, thanks to the family leader for all of their wonderful work for promoting faith leaders like you in our communities. And of course, uh, as we move through the weekend, good works to you. Please go forward with faith. Talk to those that maybe are suffering. Maybe don't share that same faith as you. I rely on it. I rely on your prayers. I know that all of you feel that too. So God bless you all. Thank you for allowing me to spend at least a short while with you today. Go forward, do good work, and God bless. Thanks so much.